So as promised, I am going to cover every single Apple rumor, renders, and blah 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 about the upcoming iPhones, Apple Watch, anything that could be coming out at the September event. And it just so happens that Apple unveiled yesterday the invites, and such a perfect time, right? And oh my god, that is really one of the worst invites that I have ever seen Apple put out. By innovation only. <laughs> I'm not even going to get into it. I'm just going to let you guys have a hound day. So this is going to be a long video, guys, so stay tuned. And I apologize again about the green screen not being there. It is still not cleaned. But next video, it'll be back up. But enough talking. Let's get going. Yo, what is happening, everybody? Michael here. Welcome back to Technoid. And as you guys know, I do promise I'm going to take a look at all the Apple rumors. Now, I'm going to use my tablet for today. I normally have it here, but I'm holding it in the hand. Uh, this is a new site to me you've probably never seen. Where I'm going to take a look at all the rumors and everything that I have been able to break down and show you guys. So we're going to start right away with the iPhones. Now, before we start talking about the 11 and the 11 Pro, um, let's take a look, in my opinion, let's take a look at the invite, the start of the whole thing. Now, if you look at the invite, the invite already gives you a confirmation that we are going to be seeing new R colors. And this should already be your first sign that Apple is pushing a new direction for the iPhones. Normally, last year we got a gold ring, we saw some new colors. Well, this year they're doing the same thing. However, instead of focusing on the premium flagships, because they know they're not going to make a lot of money on that, they focus on the R series. So the uh, 11R is going to have the green, you're going to see all the lavender colors and possibly some tweet colors and even a purplish, that's lavender still. But the point is, is that this uh, press is going to be focusing on the R, not necessarily the 10, uh, the, the 11 or the 11 Pro. I'm sorry if I'm stuttering a little bit guys, um, my script is all messed up. But now that we've got the R, now let's talk about the main flagships. So we already know that there is going to be no big radical design. It's going to retain the same similar looking thing. However, of course, it is going to look incredibly ugly. It is going to have a triple camera setup, but it couldn't have been done in any freaking better way they couldn't have done. Um, they also, unfortunately, is going to have only 3800 milliamps for the max and 3000 a little less around that area for the smaller version. We also could expect an upgraded face ID sensor. Expect the lightning port to still be there because I don't think that that's going to go away anytime soon, maybe next year. And also finally, if you want your little tech specs, you're going to be getting the A13 chip. Now the iPhone 11 and the 11 Pro or the iPhone 11 Pro, Pro Max, whatever they're going to call it, Honestly, the naming just sounds weird. I think Apple should call the R series just iPhone. Just call that iPhone and then the premium ones iPhone Pro. Now, don't get hit me with that whole tech specs blah 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 blah. I get it. The word Pro has been tossed around a lot these days from headphones to smartphones to hell even computers. So, if they're going to make a Pro, it would be easier for titling the phone, so that way it's much more easier to distinguish what you'll be getting. You don't have to say 11 Pro, 11 Pro Max, although that does some, sound something like Apple. But if they were smart enough, they should probably consider, in my opinion anyway, they should really consider just calling the R-Series iPhone and the premium ones Pro. Now, even with all that said, um, it is rumored, now this is the rumor part, which I do not necessarily believe, but there is a rumor saying that the, the bigger version is going to get 120 hertz display. Um, that would justify calling it Pro, but I don't think that that's necessarily going to happen right away. Maybe next year, but I could be wrong. I, I, you know, like I always say, I want to be wrong. But the design of this phone just looks absolutely horrible. Guys, you're looking at it. How did Apple, like, Apple, how did you manage to fuck up a design like that? How did you manage to take something that could have looked so much better and you managed to fuck it up? Like, it's not even like, everybody always says, oh, you don't look at the back of the phone. Yes, I get that. You don't necessarily look at the back of the phone. But if you're going to be taking a picture with that thing and holding it and looking at it, like, that just looks weird. Like, first of all, look at the Galaxy Note 10 Plus and even the S10. 
Yeah, it's in the middle and on the corner now, but at least it doesn't have a giant square. Now, take it granted into effect that there is some technology within that hump. But still, if Samsung can pull off a design like that without having to use a square like the Huawei's, even the Huawei's are fine. But it's so blatantly ugly that it just, it really doesn't make any sense. Now, the hardware on the phone, obviously, I've already talked about, but the exterior, it is going to retain the stainless steel, as you are seeing. It may have a frosted glass look, so it's not going to be as glossy as, like, the 10 and the 10s. It'll have a frost, kind of like the Pixel. But it still looks ugly. Like, Apple, you are known for such great-looking products. How did you manage to make something like this look so ugly? This literally looks like something that everything Apple Pro would mock up. Like this literally looks like something he would literally shit out his ass and say, these are our renders of what we're gonna think the iPhone 11 is gonna look like. Like it's literally like a homeless guy took an iPhone, put a square on the back and called that the 11. That's how bad this design is. Now, I'm not trying to say the design is gonna make the phone, but if you're presenting it, and you're looking at it as a consumer, it's gonna stand out. Even the R series, like even with the color phones, uh, the cutout, it doesn't make any sense again. You're gonna put a dual camera setup, but you put it in a square design when you have the 10 and 10s that are using a dual camera setup as we speak. Oh my God, Apple, like, are you really like losing your shits? Like, I think ever since you've transitioned away from hardware, you've given no craps about them. So you better change that shit. Um, Price-wise, we can expect it again, $999, $1,099. Honestly, there's no shock there. Uh, if anybody was ex expecting a price reduction, um, good luck with that. And as for the R series, I do believe they'll probably retain the $750 mark. So that is everything for the iPhone. It, it doesn't sound like it's going to shape up, guys. I think the 2021 is going to be the one. But even then, I'm switching to Android. I have placed my order in. I've told you guys I am switching. So definitely be up for me uh, trying out Android for a whole year. I'll decide if I'm going to stay with Apple or if I'm going to stay with Android. But um, yeah, I'm going to do it for a whole year. But anyway, next up on the chopping block is the Apple Watch Series 5. Now, not a lot of news has been talking about this, but there have been a lot of reports talking about the whole titanium and ceramic uh, kind of design that they are going for. If actually I could pull it up. So basically, it says here the Apple Watch Series 5 is rumored to be getting a new housing. So obviously, you'll have your same designs as before, but this time around, it'll look more with a titanium style. Now, the specs, we don't know much about. It'll probably just be an S5 chip. Uh, features, probably... If I had to go for anything, they probably would go for hearing, uh, maybe a hearing feature or two, but we don't know necessarily too much about it. But all we know is that it's getting a different edition. So you're going to get titanium and you're probably going to get ceramic and you're going to see it like a thousand plus for that. So expect Apple to keep overpricing products and just selling them for assholes of money. But that's Apple and I'm not being biased. I'm just being honest. Like that's just how Apple is. If you don't believe me, look at the gold Apple watch they sold. Like that clearly shows it. So. Anyway, what else can we expect from this event? Well, last year it was only Apple Watch and iPhones. So I think that they're going to do the same thing this time around. If they do throw out a curve, maybe a Ma maybe an iPad. But I do think they may not heavily focus too much on software at this event. If we take it into granted what happened last year, how everybody thought we were going to see this and that. And then what Apple really did was just two things. I think we're just going to leave it at that. I think that they're only going to focus on just the Apple Watch and the iPhone. And then when October rolls around, they will focus on the Mac and the iPad. But that is for another story. So overall, all these rumors and stuff, these are basically just my trimmed down version of what I think is going to happen. I didn't really decide to basically take everything that Bloomberg and everybody, I just wanted to chop into pieces what I think are the real stuff that I believe Apple is going to do. And this is my opinion. You don't have to agree with it, but this is what I believe. Now, for me, again, I'm not trying to sound mean and sound negative on Apple's part because I do think that these phones will offer something good for people upgrading. But as, as a whole, I don't see these, like, these, these updates. I mean, look, at the end of the day, people are still going to buy them regardless. And... The worst part of all is that every time there's a new iPhone, all these Apple YouTubers, they just keep bloating the bullshit. And it just, it gets to the point where it's annoying. Like you can't even get an honest review from them. MKBHD and iJustine uh, and a couple of others I probably thinking of. The only ones that I don't think are the exceptions are Unbox Therapy. And probably if I had to really take an honest wild guess, for honesty like nowadays because it's getting harder to pick honest youtubers because 
Every time Apple puts out a product, every YouTuber starts gloating about it, the best, 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 and it just, it, it, it takes away. So I feel like these year's devices, they're gonna do the same exact thing. They're gonna get the early units, and oh yeah, Linus, he's another honest YouTuber. But the point is, is that these iPhones are nothing substantial. So for me, they're not substantial to upgrade. Three cameras is not gonna break the bank. The Apple Watch, maybe, because this is the Series 3, so Series 5, that's two years. But even then, um, I don't necessarily think that this is going to be a big significant upgrade. I think next year is really where it's at. And I really think that next year is going to be that big one where Apple will finally refresh the design, give a little more benefits and meaning like more perks to your phone. But for right now, I, as you can see, I'm just not enthusiastic about it because there is nothing to be enthusiastic about. All these Apple YouTubers talking about, oh, we should be happy. We're going to get a September event. Oh, this is great. It's Apple holiday. Like, come on, like, enough. Like, it's tiring seeing the same shit. Always, like, it's not like you're struggling because you're an Apple fan, but like, you're making it like a cringe because people that don't get excited for this stuff, you're just like, why are you promoting this? Like, it's just an event. I mean, you'll probably get the phone anyway, but hey, look, I'm not trying to make this a rant. I'm just trying to stay focused, but look, overall, all I'm going to say to you guys is this. this is the only video I'm going to talk about. Um, the next video I'll be talking about is obviously the news will break down and one thing I want to cover before we go Apple has also released a independent repair program for third-party uh, Repair programmers that is separate from the Apple certified. So this is a great thing for third parties So Lewis Rossman, I think you can finally work hand-in-hand -hand with Apple But we're gonna have to wait and see and that's it for today's show I know we're all over the place guys But I was just trying to get back on track because I have been so far behind but it's great to be back on camera Thank you guys for watching and guys Remember just one thing, when this event happens, expectations, set them low, don't get pissed off, don't get upset when Apple doesn't avail what you want, because I say it all the time, don't get excited for this kind of stuff, set it low. If there are some curves and twists, that'll be awesome. But please, take it from me, expect only the Apple Watch and the iPhone. If they throw anything else out there, that'll be a surprise to me. But that's gonna do it, thank you for watching, and peace!